We've actually seen that in some of the CCC games. Four moves <laughs> later, they tra- find a way to trade everything. And I yeah. draw, of course, a good result for Hikaru, who it, it's, I agree with you. At some point, it seemed like his position was getting quite suspect, but just so accurate in time pressure. And more Carlson Nepo vibes. Exactly. Yeah. And it's slightly concerning for Wesley because he got the kind of position that uh, he wants. You know, he was slightly better. It's a nice pressure. And even though he did create some problems for Hikari, he's not really able to, um, you know, uh, get really close to a win there. So I think he had to keep more time on the clock. That was his mistake. I agree. And uh, we have an anti martial. That's what the move A4 is known as. Very, mm-hmm. very popular line for over well over a decade now, championed by mm-hmm. Peter Svidler, Lenier Dominguez, and of course Icaro, who at his core, I think, is still an E4 player. If you investigated what his soul was made of, it would be made out of yeah. one E4. <laughs> Not neither. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, what White is hoping for, White is trying to play on the C4 square, but Wesley but taking okay. the B2 pawn now, which is kind of awkward to predict, but okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's just, you know, <laughs> you know, these players, you know, these days, they, I, in my day, you know, we, we used to play, you know, more, you know, combative, you know, openings, but by, by, by it's, you know, nowadays, you know, they, they're always playing, you know, these quiet, you know, uh, right locals. Berlin. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, unwatchable, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we are just playing for a and they just try to stay in the top <laughs> ten and get more invitations. There's all this rating inflation. When I played Korpov, you know, we, we, we nobody you know cared about the rating. And yeah. um, okay, so I feel like in the meantime, Wesley has gotten a great position out of the opening. Look yeah. at that queen. He's got pressure down the B file, and mm-hmm. he does have his own set of weaknesses on the queen side. But I mean, obviously, they're not easy to attack at the moment. Right. Yeah. Um, or rook b4 by Wesley, but this gives Hikaru a chance to go, let's say, rook to d1, and then maybe rook to d2 to defend the pawn that way. Yeah, rook a d1, queen b6, rook d2. Wait yeah. a second, rook a d1. Yeah, wait, you have to, g4. Be, you have to g4. be careful about that move. Because you cannot play f3 due to the pin. Right, yeah. So then rook okay, Hikaru goes rook ac1. Bishop g4 is g1. still awkward to meet because you can't play f3. And if you take on a6, you drop b2. Yeah, and that's quite disastrous because then f2 is coming under it pressure. Really, it really is. Bishop g4, white will have to play queen c2, I would imagine. Yeah. And then maybe black can connect the rooks on the b file. Right. I like the yeah. look of bishop g4 and rook fb8. Yeah, that looks quite pleasant for black. You don't want to play b3 just burying your bishop alive. Ooh. Um. Yeah, this this kind of bishop Benjamin always reminds me of that one time I played Alexander Onishuk and I think the 2015 US Championship. I had a bishop on a8 as the black mm-hmm. with the black pieces. Oh yeah. I had a black pawn on b7 and he had a white pawn on b6. You can look up that game, I'm not joking. No, no, and I no, think wait. Anish Giri tweeted something that day. Like I'm so happy I'm not Daniel Naroditsky today. Wait, uh, you said you had a bishop on a8 and a pawn on b7. Sorry, it was a bishop on a8, and it was a little bit more complicated than I had a pawn on c6, and he had yeah. a pawn on c5, and then there was right. another set of pawns on a6 and a7, so my bishop was buried yeah. for eternity. But yeah. I swear Anish Giri tweeted something, and I was already feeling pained after the game. I was like, oh, my goodness. Can't pass <laughs> up the opportunity, Anish. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, Anish Giri pretty much lives on Twitter, right? But... It seems like his Twitter career is coming to an end because he tweeted that he would only come back if Magnus would tag him. And so I think Magnus is just not going to tag him on purpose. He's like, okay, finally, there's peace. It, it's like what Tigran uh, Petrosian would say about his opponent playing the King's Indian. It, it, it's not particularly funny what the story goes. Petrosian's friend comes up to him and says, oh my goodness, uh, your opponent plays the King's Indian. Jordan said, I'm not gonna stop him from doing that. <laughs> so it's like Magnus. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna I'm gonna stop not gonna stop Anish from retiring from Twitter. I mean Petrosian has been beating people the world in the champion Indian before you were doing PP in your pampers, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And of course I'm talking about Tigran Vartanovic. Uh Petrosian. Yeah. Not Petrosian. Okay, so- 
Where's like there's a five. Uh, the pawn on a four could also be a weakness. But yeah, yeah, Hikaru's worse. Hikaru... He goes h3. I like that move. Stopping bishop g4 or maybe knight g4, which could be annoying. Rook b8 by Triple Wesley. Triple stack. And uh, the point I want to make here is, is that bishop takes a4 in the meantime is not a move because there's going to be a discovery in the end. But if white plays rook yeah. b1, then you might very well snatch up that pawn. Mm -hmm. Bishop c4. Oh, very look at nice this. move by Hikaru. If you take on b2, I guess you take on rook b1 and you win material. And if you can get in b3 after bishop c4, then you nicely solidify the queen side. Right. So let's rewind back, and Hikaru wants to play b3, anchoring the bishop to the pawn. What a great move, bishop c4, and yeah. found instantly. And this is, you talk about what is good form. Moves like this define good form. When you find them quickly, you put such immense pressure on the opponent because you're right. constantly generating these ideas that, that challenge you and force you to think on your feet. Exactly. And yeah, if you're Wesley here, you must be slightly annoyed because he had a great position out of the opening, but he wasn't able to find the most precise continuation. And it seems like Hikaru is fine now. Yep, and Wesley, that's evidenced by his last move. He goes h6, uh, kind of resigning himself to the fact that b3 is going to happen. And bishop e6. So this uh, is he nice wants move. to get that bishop away from c4. All right. Um, Knight d5, maybe? Right, because if you take an e6, you cannot protect the pawn on b3 anymore. So I guess knight d5, I, I, I'd assume black's going to take with the bishop. Yeah, he goes for it. I, think we're, I agree. Bishop. bishop takes... Pawn takes. And maybe. then maybe e4? e4. Yeah. <laughs> I think we both did the same move at the same time. So white's bishop on c4 is pretty much a fat pawn, right? But it does a good job of holding all the pawns together. You know what my favorite saying is, bad bishops defend good pawns. Right, yeah. And Rudy really won't buy Hikaru. I wonder what his idea is. He would love to play d6 at some point, but but for now, that square seems well protected. And Wesley could always bring a rook, let's say, to d8 at the, when, when necessary, even play queen d6. Yeah. Um, I also don't see a great plan for Wesley. It seems like he's got a very comfortable position, but mm -hmm. he, if he's not careful, Hikaru can double on the c file or the d file. Things could get a little bit hairy. So let's see what happens. Queen e3, offering a queen trade. Yeah. <clears throat> so Wesley trades Accepted. queens and goes king to f8. I guess in an ideal world, he would love to go king e7, king d6, or maybe put the knight there even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight e8, knight d6, very typical idea whenever there's a pawn like this on d5. Yeah. Hard to say who's better here. I mean, my instinct says that Hikaru has to be a little bit more careful here just because right. he's got yeah. more weaknesses, and there comes knight e8. Yep, knight, knight e8, nice move. He wants to go knight to d6, putting pressure on the bishop on c4, and... It looks quite comfortable for Wesley that Bishop on C4 is kind of stuck. If you, oh, <laughs> I was going to say he can never right. move it, but he does. I think He's a smart waiting. decision to liquidate here. Yeah, we're going to see a rook endgame most likely. Rook takes C7. Yeah. Oh, but rook takes C7. Black also doesn't have to take the bishop. Black can take the pawn on B3. Mm -hmm. Right. And that knight is such a hero on D6, just holding everything down. Exactly, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's looking tough for Hikaru. He goes rook a7, knight takes b5, wins a pawn now. And mm -hmm. Hikaru will have to work for the draw. For sure. And I don't know if Wesley will be able to resist the temptation to go for a risk-free rook endgame. Uh -huh. No, nope, he doesn't. Yeah, and d6 by Hikaru. I mean, the pawn on d6 is annoying, but you can really push it forward. But on the other hand, what is black going to do? Is he going to go rook b6 and try to force... A, a mutual liquidation of the pawns. Yeah, I mean, Hikaru is still suffering in that endgame, but he goes for it. He feels but confident that he can draw this one. Isn't Rook, doesn't Rook E5 just win a pawn? Like, take There's... stakes in Rook E5? Uh-huh, and you're saying Rook E6 is just a draw. Yeah, Hikaru Rook E6... offered a draw. <laughs> that is <a> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I would make a couple of moves here. I mean, I would even play Rook E6, because if, if White trades and goes King G3... Then black goes e5, and white still has to calculate yeah. that. Right, I'm so sure it's a Hikaru draw. now. Like, is he confident that it's a draw, or does he suffer in the rooking game? He suffers yeah, he in the rooking game. doesn't want to calculate it. Rook a5. And now G6 he's probably going to go... Is he going to go g4? Well, g4 weakens the f3 square, which would be yeah. really dangerous. h5. 
five. This looks a little bit annoying for, for Y, but H4, nice move, fixing the pawns. Maybe Wesley had to push the G pawn. Okay, so goes rook F6, king G3. I think this is a draw. I think the pawn on D4 is too weak. Yep. And actually, how do you defend it now? Because king F4 and you're stuck. You cannot no, make progress. No issues, really. Yeah, you can never move this rook away. This pawn, if this pawn was on E6, this would be so much more juicy. You'd be able to squeeze this. Yeah. Uh, for another decade, but as it stands, I think Wesley's just going to give up the pawn and offer a draw. Yeah, rook b6. Oh. Ah, if you take rook, rook b4, move. so maybe g3 first, solidifying all the pawns. Or, or rook e7. Rook e7. Yeah, he's trying to force a draw. Yeah, I think I think there's no way Wesley can keep this going. Agreed. I mean, rook b2, rook and then b2, g3. Goes rook b4. Are there? Yeah, he card just takes it. Yeah, it's just no, draw. no chances in the pawning game. You know, White's quote unquote, you know, defect in pawn structure is purely symbolic. It's unexploitable in a pawn in a pawn end game. Exactly. G four by Karu. Yeah, it's just trading off all the pawns. I expect yep. Wesley to take King E five. Maybe just H five is a draw there, and everything will be traded off. Yeah. Yeah. So they will play it out till the bear kings. I guess Hikaru might take a little bit of time. Oh, <laughs> he or could not. have taken twenty <laughs> seconds. Yeah, got another 20 seconds off the clock. This next game yeah. is going to be a board of B3 by Wesley. That is an interesting 